pushing a bipolar narrative. Are they using tips from Lucifer to organize America and the world? Saul Alinsky's book, which he dedicates to Lucifer, has 13 rules or 13 tactics. It's called Rules for Radicals. And his 11th tactics is called, if you push a negative hard enough, it will push through and become a positive. And we not only discuss this negative, dark tactic of Alinsky, we also discuss the tactics of believers, the tactic of light and how we should respond. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. We are going right into the 11th tactic, the 13th tactics, talking about the Saul Alinsky methodologies of organizing or nudging or pushing or uh, getting your way. Hmm. And uh, the reason why we're talking about it is because we were led to this by the Lord. It started off, uh, you can go back and listen to it. There's several different parts. There can, there, if you listen to them in the context, you'll be totally enlightened on Lucifer's methodologies. And you say, why would you say that? Well, the very beginning of the book. In the, I've got the book in my hand right here. It's uh, Rules for Radicals, written by um, Saul Alinsky. It's dedicated in the very front of the book to Lucifer. Um, yeah, the very first one that did these tactics. Mm. And so... And, and then so then um, as we got the book in, we read it because I was reading a digital version first is it's dedicated to Lucifer in the front. But then it's dedicated to prior to being president, Barack Obama, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking um, we need to find out what these what's what's this is, because why would they be involved in anything dedicated to Lucifer? And uh, we also found out that, you know, Organizing in the context of America is not a negative thing. It's just if you if you're in the context of the Constitution and under as Christians up under what God would say. And one good prime example of that is who I believe is as an apostle sent from the Lord was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who set a beautiful example of how to stand rightly before God, stand up as a citizen of America, and hold us all accountable to what God's original intent was for this nation. And he led us to a better place, a place of his original intent. And uh, what you can find out more about that, but we're going to go into the 11th tactic here. And what we're doing is sharing the tactic. This was written uh, reportedly while he was in jail. And uh, it was written too in 1971, which means, you know, Dr. King never would have seen this, but mm -hmm. I believe based on his life, he would have thought, don't think so. Don't back that up mm. because he's a Christian. Sure. You know, and you see his ten commitments to be able even able to walk with him. The first one was you had to know Jesus, walk with him, and abide with him. Mm. And so, and so as we're starting this eleventh tactic, talking about it, we're going to share with you what the tactic is talked about, and and what they said was in the context of this that uh, Barack Obama, prior to being President Obama, taught this tactics, taught Alinsky tactics for four years. Well, wow. he taught them. And was on the payroll, reportedly, of Alinsky for four years. And, of course, was an organizer, so obviously used the tactics. Mm -hmm. But just, okay, that's how close he was to 13 tactics. He mm -hmm. taught them. Mm. And then Hillary Clinton um, did her college thesis on them. And you can find out more about this as you listen to the whole um, organizers of the day versus organizers of the dark. And, um, and the thesis was so intense that they... they that when her husband became president and she's just the first lady, the college um, sealed her her essay. Hmm. They sealed it. And you can see actually see the title of it and all that, but it's, it's Alinsky's methodology she wrote on. Wow. And it's like, hmm. But you just, it doesn't matter what people write. You can just see their life. And by the way, she and uh, President Obama and anybody can do whatever they're going to do. We all have that right in life to yeah. do whatever. But we as the church have to find out, you know, God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We need to be able to pay attention. And, you know, what do we need to do in the context of this? Is, are, are we being organized? Are, are Lucifer tips being used to organize America and the world? You know, if they are, what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we need to respond to that? Because we saw what happened in Germany when Lucifer tips were being used. And it turned out immediately, just like we saw when uh, Saul... The Pharisee was organizing it, ended up in a frenzy, snatching followers of Jesus Christ out of their houses and great persecution on mm -hmm. the church. We saw mm -hmm. it with Hitler, great persecution on the Jews, the Christians, and other folks that they didn't want to be there. 
as they went into Thor and everything else that they were worshiping over there. And so this is, this is, what, this is the 11th tactic. I want to share this tactic, and then I'm going to talk to you about what God said to me to kind of just, just kind of, you know, what are we being organized for? Mm-hmm. And the 11th, ta- well, I'll just tell you that first. I'm going to tell you this first. This is, this is what the Lord spoke to me on August the 12th. And he had me in this vision. In this vision, I was uh, in a, um, a big, huge office, and it was office pod. So you imagine a big office space, but they had those different pods set up where people were working in those different separated cubby holes, I guess you would call them, but it was a big open space. And I realized that um, everybody uh, was gathering a, a whole bunch of data on everybody. Hmm. It was just tons of data being gathered, personal information about everyone, everything. And all of a sudden, you know, I just, I, I just thought to myself, I think this is not right. This is not right. And, and, and this is, this is total control of everything. I said, mm. in the vision, I said this is total control of everything. Mm-hmm. And it was personal information. It's also coming, everything tracking it from everything. I was just gathering every piece of data. Wow. And then all of a sudden there was a break where we all went on break and everybody had their own bulletin board, their own little bulletin board in their areas. And, and it wasn't a safe area to be able to communicate, obviously, what I was about to communicate. Mm. And so I was going to write on my bulletin board, you know, and I started writing prophetically on the bulletin board. And this is what I wrote. And I wrote, and the number of his name was 666. And that's what the word of God, the word of God talks about that there'll be an economy, the beast economy, the beast economy. John, can you look that up while I'm continuing to talk? A beast economy in Revelation and the beast economy that um, things are being shifted right now for that to, to be able to take place. Now understand the folks that are that, I mean, if it was Hitler talking to you, uh, he would tell you, so what? Mm-hmm. As long as I'm over the economy, I don't care what beast it is. And, um, and so men want to rule the world. So it looks like we're being organized and you go back and listen to the VFN torch to, uh, Johnny foot when he gave the prophetic word sometime mm-hmm. back and we're going into the beast economy and all these different things. It's like, that's why we're being organized so that, that things could be so that I can help you and, uh, we can better, you know, control things and distribute things out mm-hmm. and, you know, and those type of things that take place. And so this is what he says that there will be a, uh, a beast economy that um, that nobody will be able to, big or small, will be able to buy or sell, will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And the number of his name, the number of his name is 666. It's in uh, Revelation 13. 13, 16, yeah. 13, 16. And he says... Um, he also, this is the beast, he also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or his forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is the man's number his number is six 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 so god took me in a vision that's exactly what's going Mm. on because we're asking the question right the question is we're and god's just unfolding this and so this is that Mm -hmm. this is that and so we're being organized in the context of that And by the way, everybody's going to be broadsided because everybody's thinking lo- this, and mm-hmm. it's really that in the context of it. Everybody's looking at the right hand, but you should be looking at the left hand. Mm-hmm. So what is the le- 11th tactic of uh, that Lucifer's tips here for organizing uh, Alinsky talks about in his 13 tactics, which the president taught for four years, and Hillary Clinton did a, a college thesis on the sealed. The 11th tactic is this. If you push a negative hard and deep enough, it was a video. It was the video 
They saw the video that created the riots, which okay. caused the embassy to be, and that's the reason why Chris is dead, right? right. Mm -hmm. If you push a negative hard and deep enough, it will break through into a counter side because every positive has a negative. Mm. So you got to find what the, I mean, when you say up, Satan says down. Mm -hmm. When you say right, they say left. That's why, you know, that, that when uh, Marshall Gantz is talking about, you know, organizing, and uh, he was on the Bill Morrill's Bill Morrier show um, on public broadcasting network, which you guys, you can see it. You can get to it at least on the uh, VFN torch, uh, VFNTV.com. He talks about that uh, a organizer is almost um, schizophrenic in nature. I guess that would be the word or bipolar because they're never, they're not looking. They don't, they don't have no, they have no, they have no place. Mm -hmm. They just want to. If you say up, their place is down. If they say right, their place is left. If they, because the point is not, the it's to polarize, so that you can organize, but the polarization creates the conflict that allows you to begin to 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 negotiate, and then negotiate. Then you deorganize and you settle, and that's the model. Sounds like organized chaos. Well, that's mm -hmm. exactly what it is, and so that's the that's the tactics, that's the techniques, and the context of that. And so what we're seeing here is, you know, that this is this is Lucifer's tips and tactics. But so then, we, if they push a negative long enough and hard enough, then it will push to its counter side because every positive has a negative. And when somebody, you know, is, is trying to and and people are trying to have logical discussions, it's like you're wasting your breath and your time and you're buying into the whole Olinsky model here. Just mm -hmm. relax a little mm -hmm. bit. Right. And this is what Jesus said. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, looking at the light side, the one who's the organizer of the day, Mark 11, 22 through 25, he says, have faith in God. This is what Jesus said. Have faith in God when he's talking to the folks there. Truly, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in my name in prayer, believe that you received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against your against anyone, forgive them so that your heavenly father will forgive you your sins. You say, why in the world would you say that? Because God's created us in his image and his likeness. And when you look at just the Tower of Babel and understand that that you, you can speak stuff long enough and loud enough, and if people start, has, people have to buy into your narrative. They have to buy into it, and they bought in to the narrative of the Tower of Babel, and Nimrod wanted to build a tower to heaven, and so he began to just speak out his narrative, which is totally against God. It mm -hmm. was, it was a a negative. It was the counter side of a positive, and everybody bought into it. They were unified in one effort in one direction. And they were going to build this tower to heaven. Mm. And, they're, and this is what God said. You know, let's go down there and see what they're doing. And when they found out what they're doing, they came back. This, the report was this. The report was, they're going to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. Was it God? No. But is it how God's designed human beings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every evil person who's controlled by darkness, they understand. Lucifer understands. The church doesn't understand this as much. You need to get, we need to get wise in this that you have to buy into the narrative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to buy in. That's why you got to get discipled. That's why you got to start reading your Bible because if you don't get in the word, you're, you, you know, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. You're not going to stand for God if you don't know how God stands. And so when he's sitting here saying you have the faith, so if you believe the lie, if you believe the lie, if you believe the lie and you start confessing it and buy into it, now your faith and your creativeness is going to lock into that. And all of a sudden, you're, it's going to come to pass, just like the Nazi party came to pass, just like all these other things came to pass, because people just bought in to what the narrative that was being said, because mm -hmm. people have to get the buy-in. Why? Because you are created with your own authority, and you have to actually get the buy-in. Well, listen, with walking with God, you, you have to walk, get the buy-in with God. You're going to have to know what His Word is. You're going to have to find out His ways. And you can't walk in darkness while you're claiming to be a child of the light. And we already talked about that already. And God spoke to me very specifically. We've got people trying to play both sides of the fence in the context of that. 
and it's untrue. I mean, whoever's, whoever that you're obeying is who you're a slave to. We're talking about the 11th uh, tactic, the dark tactic of uh, Alinsky, Saul Alinsky, and um, organizing children of the dark. Mm. And, um, uh, and it's talking about pushing a negative long enough. In other words, uh, you know, saying something that's not true, but it's the bipolar opposite of what is true. And it's very important as believers that we know what the truth is. It's the truth that sets you free. If so many people are, are saying, listen, we know we, uh, we're a free country and we're, we're supposed to be free. Well, you know, if you're part of the 97% that are not reading the word of God and applying it to your life or the 81% that's not even touching the word of God, it's the truth that sets you free. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to buy into a lie when you don't know the truth. And this, that, that our founding fathers, there's a reason why they said we're one nation under God. And you've got to go and listen to America, how we got here and how we stay here. It didn't just happen. And there's, there's people that are rolling over in their, well, they're not rolling over their grave because they burnt their bones for making sure you can have a Bible to be able to read today that you're not reading. And so we got to make sure when people are giving us narratives that it lines up with God's narrative because you could have some Nimrod giving you some it's <laughs> you can have well nimrod was the one that did the tower of babel it, you have flashbacks <laughs> <laughs> okay moving on how's your scooter <laughs> doing yeah the, so nimrod so you listen you can have some nimrod nimrod who has a great vision in his own perspective or her perspective who's wanting to build a, a tower that they will succeed in and they have enough ability now because what God did, he went down there and saw Nimrod uh, building this tower and they want to build it to heaven. Everybody was uh, buying into the narrative and they were going to do it. So God said this. God said, listen, they're going to accomplish because they're all in agreement. They're all walking in agreement in one vision, one clarity, one narrative. They're going to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And so the way that he defeated that, he said, go down there and con confuse their language. That's why, that's why it's called the Tower of Babel. Because all of a sudden they couldn't communicate anymore. Now what do we have now? We have all this technology that's helping people bypass the Babel. Mm. And so we can communicate now with a technology where you can, things will translate. You have little apps, apps that translate for you that can really begin to get a vision and say, hey, now I can see how yeah. we can rule the world now because we can build this tower to heaven. We can have this thing because now we can communicate because you just speak into it, your language and it'll you know, come out in the other language over there, trying to defeat, of course, you can't, you know, wisdom will defeat what God's going to do. They'll mm -hmm. just come and confuse it again. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing is this, you don't want to be on Nimrod's side. You don't want to, even though it looks, it can succeed, you think that's a great concept. And you, when you say this thing can work, you're not lying because God was not lying when he said they're going to accomplish this thing. He said, but this ain't going to happen. Right. And so he confused them, which means understand that you can you you are a creative force. You are a creative human being. You can speak things, and the people... I'm telling you what, people that don't even know God sometimes understand how they're created greater than people who say they know God, and Jesus writes out in his word how that they can speak things into existence. And uh, But the world's out there talking about, you know, you know th if you broadcast things out, things uh -huh. come to you, and all these different secret type things. And what it is is that we're creative. We can create darkness, we can create light, we can, we can do those type of things. And so we have to understand that when the truth of God comes to us, we have to go to it and gather it. But he says specifically when he's talking about the four soils in Matthew chapter 13, he says, listen, some soil falls on the rocky places on the ground and immediately the adversary comes and steals it and takes it away. So not only do you got to get in the word, but you got to hold on to the word. Mm. You got to meditate on it. You got to soak on it because the enemy, enemy knows he needs to use a narrative to get you to buy in. Mm hmm. This is serious stuff, and they understand. Lucifer understands that Hitler needed a narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, and the organizers of today who organize in darkness, not every organizer is doing that, they understand that you have a narrative, but the organizers of the day, even Jesus has a narrative. But, is, but the thing is, is it a true narrative, or is it, a, is it a lying narrative? Is it a day narrative, or is it a night narrative? And it's so important because, because people will buy into that. And if you mislead God's people, 
because you balled into a dark narrative, you're going to be held accountable for that. Mm -hmm. Totally held accountable for that. And Jesus said, go make disciples of the nations. That's every one of us, all the different ethnos of the world. Well, the word comes from the word ethnos or ethnic groups. And so what disciples are people that actually know the truth. They know what God's truth is. They, they walk in it and the truth sets them free. America's free because it was one nation under, under God and the word of God that we're free to worship God freely in this nation. And the enemy's creeping in with a new narrative to try to undo that. And if you buy into this narrative, I'm not saying it won't be successful. I'm saying it's going to be successful if the church does not rise up and say, you know what, God, we're sorry. Mm -hmm. We see the narrative. We see how the enemy's coming in and defeating all these other things that you laid up to be able to. But, you know, God, you're greater than this. The truth is, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm going to know what the truth is, so when I hear people pushing a negative so hard, trying to, to get us to buy into the, the bipolar opposite of what God's word says, I know it's a lie. I know it's a lie. And people are so shocked today that when somebody lies, they go, you know, it's offensive to say that somebody lied. It's like, isn't it more offensive to be lied to mm. than to call mm -hmm. a lie? The, 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 this is the negative. The negative got pushed so hard now that people have co are convinced now to call a liar a liar is worse than a person being the liar. Mm. That's the narrative. Yeah. The narratives today that somebody ball face lies to you, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to say anything because it's worse for you to call them a liar wow, <laughs> than it right. is for, yeah. for them to lie to you. Wow. Is that right, brilliant? That is like, that is the 11th tactic. Mm -hmm. That's the 11th tactic. Because when you see congressmen, you see Lindy Andrews, they're going like, you know, I misspoke. <laughs> it's like, that was an intense, you lied. that was an intense <laughs> lie. That was a very intense lie, you know, and, and God can forgive you for it, but help us out here hey. because we're going to buy into your, your, your darkness here. And we're going to buy into your narrative. And if you'll do that, you'll do anything. That's right. You'll do anything. And so he says very specifically that, that we can't, if we don't give up everything, we cannot be his disciples. So if we follow his teachings and we're willing to let everything go, then we're, it's, it's okay. We can, we can follow God. The enemy's going to try to control you through all these different things and with these narratives. And we understand that in the context of what they're doing is trying to push the opposite, the bipolar opposite of what God's word says. And understand that God said they will accomplish, this Nimrod vision will be accomplished if we don't go down there and confuse their language. Mm. If we don't go down there and confuse their language, this narrative that they're, they're promulgating, that people now clearly kind of understand, and they're going in that direction, they will accomplish it. What is, the, what is the dark side of this tactic? The dark side of the 11th tactic is if you push a negative hard and deep enough, it will break through into its counter side and every positive has a negative. That's what you saw taking place with the Libyan embassy over there. They were pushing that, that video and that's oh, going yeah. on. But you know what? We're wise to that now and we understand. We've got to start find out what God's truth is. We've got to get into the Word of God. We've got to be a disciple. We've got to begin to abide with God and we can stand amidst all the lies and we can be light in the midst of all the darkness. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.